be about the tax slavery. Uh, just to, f if you if you want to opt out of the system, if you want to uh, opt out of your tax slavery, you firstly you have to realize you are a tax slave. So so the question is, you should ask, am I a tax slave? How did how did I became uh, how did I become tax slave? Uh, do I feel comfortable in the position of of slave? Um, you should know that taxation is always involuntary, and taxation means not only paying like an income tax, for example, but it means uh, paying mandatory health or uh, social insurance, which is not insurance but like a healthcare tax, and you should know that uh, usually when you when you were born, you you became tax slave uh, by very often by your citizenship. For example, if you are the U.S. citizen or a citizen of Eritrea, and uh, if you are a Czech citizen, for example, or Slovak citizens, um, you 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 have to be like a tax slave somewhere. So you have to be tax resident somewhere. If you are like a Czech or Slovak or you, European European resident, and you are traveling all the time, every two days you visit some different country. Uh, so basically, you don't stay anywhere. Then, so you don't have center of interest anywhere, no residency anywhere. Your home country, like a issuer of your passport, uh, will usurp you, and you become the stuck citizen of Czech Republic or Slovakia. So, so this is really important to say. Most people in the world. They have to be tax residents somewhere. And there are some specific rules. Um, but fortunately, even if you're a tax slave, you can still choose the best suitable tax master. <clears throat> so one important information, you have to be a tax slave somewhere. Uh, but as I told you, now we have excellent possibility to choose your good, it's, it's very, is a bit paradox, but still you can choose like a good tax masters. Uh, firstly, I, I, would, I would like to talk something about the, the magic period of one, six months or one, uh, 183 days, because usually when you stayed in any country of the world more than six months or one, 183 uh, 83 days, some countries it's even less, like uh, the US, for example, or Switzerland, you are automatically becoming tax resident of the given country. Uh, so, so the given country usurps you as a tax resident. Um, so you should, be, you should know this information, and if you, want, if you don't want to be like a tax slave of any tax country, uh, of any country you, should be, you have to basically two options. One option is move all the time, like me, for example. I don't stay anywhere more than three months, for example. I'm like a full perpetual traveler. The other option is just to leave, for example, from crypto loans. There are a lot of, like, a Bitcoin, I'm not sure about Monero, collateral loans. So basically, if you leave from loan, you don't need to pay taxes, you don't need to pay insurance. <clears throat> One important information, uh, we live in, in a global apartheid because all people in the world are discriminated based on their birthplace. So depending when you when you were born, you have you have your citizenship, you have your passport, and you can travel uh, just to some specific countries you are allowed to. Um, if unlucky people born, for example, in shitty countries uh, with a shitty passport, usually they never can leave their home country and and achieve dreams, their dreams in a better countries. Uh, so I have, for example, many friends from uh, uh, from Iran, and if you if you are from Iran, you basically uh, you are stuck, and you can you cannot visit most countries. And what is quite sad is that the most states, most countries, they accepted this global apartheid, and they call it visa policies. Uh, but maybe you say, okay, but this visas policy, this global discrimination of all people based on their citizenship, it's, it's like a collective decision because we are protecting ourselves against dangerous immigrants and dangerous crimes committed by these immigrants. But this is like a bullshit. This is like a fabricated government bullshit. And if you don't believe me, there is like a great book which is called Open Borders from Brian Kaplan, Kaplan the guy. 
Uh, and even if you if you res respect, for example, uh, for example, um, some property rights, you should know that thanks to the government, immigrants cannot physically come to your private property and work for there because they need like a work visas and a lot of uh, permissions and <clears throat> so. Uh, if you want to have the most personal economic freedom, now this is like a this this looks like a, a quite simple or, or basic. Uh, you should have like a good card in your wallet. Good card means you need to have a good passport. You need to have a good national ID. You need to have a good card to be able to open the bank accounts, for example, in the good country, to move freely. Uh, because if you don't have good cards in your wallet, so you are from Iran or you are from Central African country, you are stuck. You cannot move freely, you cannot open the bank account, you cannot drive, you cannot do business. So, so the, question, the question for this presentation is, how it is possible to obtain the best cards on the market? And now we are now we are moving to the question of becoming a global, a global opportunist. Uh, you should know that like a uh, good citizenship or good passport is a, com is a commercial product. And it's normal that rich people, they used to buy this commercial product like a citizenship. The passport is basically proof of your citizenship somewhere in some countries. The best passport in the world is EU passport from Spain you can buy, a Spanish passport. It's quite expensive, it costs half a million euros. So mainly ch rich Chinese people and Russian people can afford and, uh, to buy this expensive Spanish citizenship. The second best, uh, the second best EU passport is from Malta, uh, and this passport is, is even more expensive. It costs seven, up to 700,000 uh, euros, really a lot. And then you have, you have a few cheaper options. So the best non-EU passport is, according to my analysis, Sun Kids and Navies, which costs about $200,000. Basically, you have to invest your money to some government fund, or, or you have to buy the, some property. You can sell this property after seven years. And if you need some good and still cheap passport, I recommend you San Lucia which costs about $100,000. And if you have no money, but you have a lot of time, a lot of energy, the cheapest option is to obtain Brazilian, Brazilian passport, because when you have Brazilian citizenship, you, you just need to move to Brazil for one or two years, have a baby in Brazil, doesn't matter with who, <laughs> okay? Just move uh, to Brazil, have a baby. Uh, your baby automatically obtains citizenship of Brazil, and when you leave there at least one or two years as his or her parent, you can ask for Brazilian citizenship, which is part of this Brazilian naturalization process. So this is the second option, but you have to pass language test, language exam from uh, Portuguese. So you have to speak Portuguese, at least some basic level. So maybe many of you, you can ask, okay, do I really need a second citizenship? If you have EU passport, probably not. Uh, basically, second citizenship uh, provides you a better legal protection. For example, when your when your home country decides to revoke uh, de decide to revoke your passport, and they want to report you back to your home citizen home citizenship country, you can still have the second passport, for example. So you, you are still a legal uh, like a legally somewhere and they cannot deport you so easily. So maybe I should mention the, the case of uh, Snowden. Basically, Snowden was traveling, I think, from Hong Kong to uh, Colombia, uh, not Colombia, to Ecuador or Bolivia. And he was traveling via, via Moscow, via Russia. And when he was in Moscow at the airport, Americans, American government decided to revoke his US passport. And then, basically, he became illegal, uh, illegal tourist in Moscow. So that's the reason why he's stuck in Moscow. Not because he, he wanted to be stuck in Moscow, but because Americans revoked 
his uh, US passport. And if he had passport, for example, of St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, or any other country, he could continue to Bolivia or uh, Ecuador, and basically Russians uh, could not arrest him as an illegal immigrant. One important information, uh, usually your citizenship doesn't define your tax residency. So tax residency depends usually on the place where you stay majority of your time, like more than six months, or where you have center of your interest. And center of your interest is defined by your residency, usually permanent residency. Uh, so basically, maybe I should mention you there is like a big phenomena which is called uh, birth tourism. So in basically all uh, North American, Central American, and South American country, there is like a principle which is called citizenship by soil. So when you have a baby in the US, Canada, Mexico, uh, Brazil, Paraguay, your, your baby automatically will obtain the citizenship of the given country just because he or she was born in the given country. In Europe, or most European countries, we have the principle which is called citizenship by blood. So it, it means you inherit your citizenship from, from, from your parents. So for example, if you're, if you're like an EU citizen, it, it can be a good idea to have a baby in America, just to use benefits of this birth tourist. Last time, when I was in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, uh, I saw like a thousand and thousand Russian, Russian f like a female tourist, pregnant, preg female pregnant tourist. They were traveling to, to Buenos Aires to have a baby. So ultimately, their babies uh, became Argentinian citizens, and, they, and they, as their parents, they can immediately obtain permanent residence in Argentina, which is not a good deal but still better than living in Russia. <laughs> so as I told you, uh, temporary or permanent residency defines your center of your interest and also basically depends your tax residency too. And that's what is important for you. So you should definitely avoid permanent residencies where you have any duties associated with these residency. Like for example, European residencies like a Czech residency or Slovak residency or any European residency, which means when you are like resident of Czech Republic, Slovakia, you have to pay like healthcare insurance, social insurance, you have a lot of duties and you don't want, you, you don't want to. You, have, you, you, you want like a good uh, residency in, in a country with no duties at all. So me, I personally prefer residency with no or, no or territorial taxation and still, there are many countries with territorial taxation. Almost all countries in Central Europe, in South America, is Paraguay. No tax uh, residency countries, for example, Dubai. Uh, my, so, so I have the residency, now I have residency in Panama, which is tax territorial taxation country in Paraguay. And I'm in the process of asking the residents in Uruguay. Uh, I'm going to explain you why I still think that Paraguay is probably the best and cheapest residency for digital nomad because you don't need to stay there majority of your time and uh, you can still be tax resident of Paraguay you can enjoy benefits of territorial taxation of Paraguay and what is quite cool immediately when you receive national ID of Paraguay uh, which is called cedula uh, you can uh, you can register at the tax office in Paraguay and they you know, ask for the driving license of Paraguay, and they basically provide you something what is called tax certificate. So you will have your tax residency somewhere. So for example, when you travel a lot, your home country cannot usurp you and cannot just say, hey, you'll be our tax resident because you don't have tax residency somewhere else. <clears throat> and the process is quite easy, you can do it like in three days, usually in one, two days. Uh, what is interesting about Paraguay, uh, also like Georgia, for example, these two countries, they didn't sign CRS. You know what is CRS? Raise your hand if you know CRS. CRS basically means Common Reporting Standard. So uh, financial institution or crypto exchanges in countries which did not sign CRS, they don't do automatic reporting. So they don't say any uh, 
sensitive information, for example, that you have a bank account or crypto account in this country to your tax residency country. Um, Paraguay is also considered to be like a tax paradise in South America because there is 10% uh, 10 tax for your local income and 0% tax for foreign income because it's a territorial taxation country. VAT is also very low, like 10%. It's core member of Mercosur, which means that uh, using your Paraguayan cedula without your passport, you can visit Uruguay, Brazil, and Argentina. And now we are basically building community in Paraguay, crypto, crypto community, Bitcoin and Monero fund, uh, uh, funds. And now maybe I should mention benefits or some more information about other options, good residencies, uh, good residencies with, with the zero or territorial uh, taxation. So also a good destination is Panama, for example. The problem of obtaining a permanent residence in Panama is that you have to invest $200,000 and buy some local property in Panama or you have, to be, you have to be employed in an like existing Panamanian company for two year, first two years. The other option is Uruguay. The problem of Uruguay for digital nomads is to obtain the permanent residency in Uruguay. You have to stay there first two years, majority of your time, at least six months every year. And the third option, very popular, is Dubai. The problem of Dubai is that you have to also basically live in Dubai or you have to visit Dubai every six months and keep your residency just by doing business. So you have to be an employee of some existing Dubai company or you have to create your own Dubai, Dubai company. So these are some other options. And now the question is how you can do business when you are like a tax resident in Dubai, Panama, Paraguay, Uruguay, how you can do business inside of the European Union or, or basically anywhere. Uh, if you are non-US citizen or non-US tax resident, you are probably quite lucky because you are not like this global tax slave. And it is, in this situation, the best, what you can do, you can, you can create something what is called US LLC disregarded company. And this US LLC disregarded company, it works as a proxy. So, so basically, you can use this company to issue invoices anywhere out of the US, for example, to your European customers or Asian customers. And then the tax duty of this US LLC company is transformed from this US LLC company to the tax residency of the owner of this company. So if you're a Paraguay or Panamanian, Panamanian owner, or the, the owner who has tax residence in these countries, this tax duty is transformed to Paraguay or, or um, uh, Panama. And as I mentioned before, in these countries, you don't need to pay any taxes from foreign income. So whether you have income from this US LLC company, as a, and you own this company as a Paraguayan or Panamanian tax resident doing business out of the US, you basically don't need to pay any taxes which is like a really popular scenario for many digital nomads. Uh, you can also, I strongly recommend you not to use bank accounts. Uh, with the bank accounts, it's like with a, with a regulation. The, the best bank is no bank. <laughs> the best regulation is no regulation. But unfortunately, many people cannot afford to be Mono or Bitcoin only. They still need to have use like, a, like bank accounts. When you have this US LLC company, you can use companies like Mercury.com or Wise.com. Uh, but if you can afford it, just stay in Monero, stay in Bitcoin, and then you receive a lot of freedom. And especially when you use Monero, you will receive even a lot of privacy. Uh, this is pretty obvious, but I would like to mention that being full crypto means no bank reporting, no stopping and freezing your transactions. No stupid questions. No stupid questions from any third parties, authorities, crypto exchanges, or banks. Uh, so we, when you have no bank account and you do business purely using crypto, number of your possibilities where, to, where you can create company significantly increases. Because for example, 
if you, if you create a company in Panama, which is 30 total taxation country, even for companies, so basically Panamanian companies pay zero taxes for uh, non-Panamanian income, foreign income, it's fine that you create a Panamanian company, but it's almost impossible to open the bank account for a Panamanian company, even in Panamanian banks, if physically in Panama. So, but if you stay in crypto, you use Monero, for example, for a Panamanian company, you can use any, any crypto or any currency for your Panamanian company, uh, then you don't need to care that you don't have a bank account and you can still use Panamanian company, for example. So Monero is definitely the best liberation tool here. Uh, if you have to have like a, any bank account, you should definitely prefer banks in non-CRS countries, especially for example, Georgia. Georgia is now super popular uh, regarding banks. You can open the bank account in Bank of Georgia or TBC banks. Uh, Georgia's crypto-friendly, uh, like it's one of the most crypto-friendly country in the world. So basically, you pay zero percent taxes uh, if you're a tax resident of, of Georgia. Um, and if, you, if you're a digital nomad, you have many uh, options like a crypto cards. You can top up with the Bitcoin Lightning, for example. Still not with Monero, but with the Bitcoin Lightning, which is pretty good. Like Xapo.com, for example. And if you travel a lot, you definitely need to care about your like a physical privacy. Uh, for example, me personally, I use recent Google Pixel 7 Pro. I flash it with a Graphene OS. You probably know Graphene. Uh, if you're super paranoid, there is a Banana phone, which is Nokia 8110 4G. In this phone, you can easily crack it or hack it and change your email. You're like a physical device identification. It's illegal in the EU, so don't do it. But that's the option. <laughs> uh, if you uh, prefer anonymous SIM cards. So basically, you have two, like a big option. The first option is Silent Link. Uh, you can buy, I think even with Monero, you can buy like an anonymous eSIM. The second option is keepgo.com which can be paid by Bitcoin. Uh, so you can, you can have anonymous SIM cards. For example, here in Czech Republic, it's still possible to buy anonymous SIM cards and they work perfectly in, the, in all European countries. Now, the best option is called uh, O2 SIM card for Ukrainian residents in the Czech Republic. You, have, uh, it's, uh, you can buy it completely anonymously and you have like a 15 gigabytes for 10 euros, nothing. I strongly recommend you these options. Uh, and then, if you travel a lot and you need, you need some good, uh, good data, you can also use like a non-anonymous KYC SIM cards. For example, I use Paraguay Claro. If you're a US citizen or you stay majority of your time in the US, you can use, for example, uh, Google Fi. So, we are, we are going to the, to the end. Um, the global opportunities may look like this. So you have like an EU citizenship or you have Canadian citizenship. You have no residency in the EU. So one important information is really good to be EU citizen, but it's not, it's definitely a good, bad idea to be EU resident, especially tax resident. So you want to be EU citizen, but just visiting the EU with no duties, uh, with no tax residency. Uh, the best permanent or tax residency is, for example, in Paraguay, Dubai, Panama, uh, to do business, you can do business using US LLC, disregard the company in Florida, uh, Wyoming, for example. Don't use bank accounts if you can afford it. So prefer Monero or Bitcoin Lightning all the time. And then uh, if you have to use bank account, then create your bank account in non serious country, like a Georgia, for example, Paraguay. If you want to use like a crypto card, the best option is probably xapo.com because in xapo.com you can set up your tax residency in Paraguay or Uruguay or Panama and it works perfectly. Don't pay the local state healthcare insurance and instead of the, instead uh, use international healthcare provider, for example, I use William Russell and use anonymous SIM cards like a silent link, for example, of KeepGo using Bitcoin. That's all. 
one important information, don't support by your taxes a corruption and victimless crimes. Because when you pay taxes, in Slovakia or Czech Republic, we used to say, every, any person who pays taxes support local corruption. And definitely nobody of you wants to support local corruption, and especially victimless crimes. In Slovakia, we used to arrest and put to jail people for marijuana for 15 or 20 years, just for possession of marijuana. And as a taxpayer, you definitely, you definitely don't want to support these uh, victimless crimes. So become free, become the global opportunist. Thanks a lot.